Let's have a closer look at what happened at the first race of the 2022 Formula 1 season, how each team performed and how teams tried to improve their car. Let's start with Ferrari. The Italian team showed impressively that they have the best overall package at the moment. They brought a strong, if not the strongest, and at the same time reliable engine. They created a good aerodynamic concept with the largest side pods on the grid to keep the front rear wake outboard and since the first day of testing they didn't change that concept. So they have the maximum experience with their car and know it better than other title contenders. During pre-season testing Ferrari tested lots of different setups and parts to improve the bouncing problem. They copied the long slotted floor from McLaren pretty quickly and initially chose a setup with high rate height and soft suspension. That way the car is more forgiving, easier to control for the drivers, which gives them more confidence, and they have lots of mechanical grip in slow speed corners. By reducing the bouncing they can carefully run the car lower, which gives them more downforce from the floor, which in return allows them to reduce downforce on the wings. Since the floor has much higher aerodynamic efficiency compared to wings, that reduces drag and gives them higher top speed. The Red Bull on the other hand showed a strong performance too, but couldn't quite reach the Ferraris in qualifying and during the long runs. In the end a fuel pump problem took both cars out of the race just before the finish. Red Bull brought a major update at the end of testing, which means that they didn't have as much time as Ferrari to get to know their current car. Mercedes had two main problems, high engine temperatures and an overall lack of downforce. The high temperatures forced them to lift and coast and to turn the engine down. The lack of downforce is a result of them not being able to solve their bouncing issues so far. They were trying stays and skid blocks at the floor edge in testing to avoid the floor from touching the ground and hence choking the diffuser. They then tried a stiffer suspension, but that had other disadvantages, like a twitchy behavior of the car. And now they did what every team wants to avoid. They increased the ride height. The result is that they lack overall downforce and have higher tire degradation because the car tends to slide more than others. Also, to increase downforce again, they tried to recover it with more aggressive wings. But that increased drag and reduced their straight line speed. If they run the car lower, the bouncing is so strong that they start losing parts and seriously damage the car over time. Also Mercedes brought a major update during testing, so they didn't have as many days with the new car as Ferrari. Aston Martin is using the same wind tunnel and seems to have a similar diffuser design. And so they have the same bouncing issue, but also they couldn't solve it yet. So they run their car higher and lack overall downforce which placed them at the end of the grid. They are still a smaller team and don't react to problems as quickly as Mercedes, but we can be sure that they will try the same things to solve the issue. Also, the massive restructuring of the Aston Martin team and hiring lots of new staff means that they first have to become a working team again, before they can react as quickly as others. Another thing we see at Mercedes engine teams is that they all struggled with engine temperatures. Customer teams usually receive cooling requirements for the drivetrain from the manufacturer and design their own cooling systems accordingly. It seems like the requirements they received from Mercedes for this year were too low and they all designed systems with too little air mass flow. Also the package that Mercedes brought to the track this year is extremely tight. Check out my other video if you want to know more about it. Haas is benefiting from the strong Ferrari engine and showed a solid performance with their large but rather conventional side pods and aero concept. Alfa Romeo is another Ferrari powered team that was happy about the new strong engine and additionally they could improve their massive bouncing issues of the tests. Alpine managed to bring one new bodywork to the track which uses the same bobsleigh concept as the Ferrari and helps to keep the high energy flow close to the car's center line. So well done for bringing a new bodywork and reacting so quickly. That is a lot of work. But Alpine also had problems with high degradation and struggled with tire management. Alfa Tauri showed some good pace but had drivetrain trouble 
on one car and complained about a lack of high speed grip. This could mean that they still struggle to keep the front rear wake outboard in corners. One of the big challenges of this year. And McLaren and Williams struggled with overall pace and found themselves at the end of the field. Yes, they have the same temperature issues with the Mercedes engine and they also try to avoid bouncing like the others, but their problems seem to be more substantial. When the McLaren was presented, we already discussed the unusual aero concept of the car. While other teams are trying to get more air underneath the car, McLaren guides the center flow upwards and around the side pods and away from the underbody, which is also a massive directional change and hence costs energy. Furthermore, their bodywork is neither using the full width of the rack box nor using undercut or downwash. McLaren, Williams and Mercedes are the three cars on the grid that are using tight bodyworks, which helped in the last years to get more energy to the back, but since the outwash producing parts are banned this year, managing the front rear wake is the key topic. If you cannot keep the wake outboard, it will hit your downforce producing parts at the back and reduce their performance, hence less overall grip. Mercedes seemed to have some tools to manage that better with their unusual bodywork, but already during the shakedown we couldn't really figure out how Williams and McLaren want to manage the wake efficiently. The good thing is that all of them have tight packages underneath and they can produce larger bodyworks anytime. The problem with that is that a bodywork change is a massive challenge in terms of development and part production. And here, it would mean a complete change of philosophy, which could go either way. Another huge problem for McLaren during testing was the brake temperature issue. They somehow underestimated the thermodynamics here and couldn't fix it quickly at the track, because they needed to wait for new parts, which cost them lots of running time. Now they quickly changed to larger brake ducts and fixed the temperature problem, but also it changed the flow around the wheels. While the front wheel brake ducts are important, the massive aero problems they are having at the moment seem to be much more than just some larger brake ducts. The scary pictures of them covered in flowvis while testing seem to have become reality. If a car looks like that, it usually means that the team is unsure about the overall flow around the car and has correlation problems. We have to remember that McLaren is still using the old Toyota wind tunnel in Cologne, which is good but other teams moved on to other more advanced wind tunnels in the past. So overall it looks like that as long as you have no engine temperature issues, you could reduce bouncing and you have wider side pods to keep the front wheel wake outside, you have a good basis and can perform well. All other teams have a lot of work in front of them. So I hope you liked this little insight and see you at the next video.